Good afternoon, everyone. Sharon May is speaking. Thanks for joining. So today, we are going to talk about um, intuitive eating. Such an important, it's such an important aspect of our health, you know. So let's start off with this. I want to just talk to you about your uniqueness. You know, how incredible is it that you are so unique? Your genes are so unique to you, and no one has them. No one on this planet has your, your genes. And so this unique is, uniqueness is called bioindividuality. So, and how incredible is your body? How incredible is the deep wisdom of your body? All of these things are just absolutely amazing. So not only does your body have an amazing intelligence, but its continual need to find balance and perform its own healing is just incredible. It's magnificent. I mean, I'm in awe of these bodies that we live in. I've seen so many changes that bring me to my knees with, with just being so humble with how things can change for so many people. So right now, your pancreas has secreted insulin in response to your last meal. Your digestive system produced 10 liters of digestive enzymes in the last 24 hours, and your digestive tract replaces itself every four days. You carry around about at least three to four pounds of bacteria which helps to maintain the health of your digestive system. But we, as we've discussed before, these bacteria impact the entire body. Your cells in your body are con constantly regenerating, and your immune system replaces itself, it replaces its entire army every week, except, of course, when it's under some viral attack or um, vital attack, when it produces its capacity, its production capacity jumps to about 200,000 new immune cells every minute. Neurotransmitters are firing, which enables the thought process. And we have about 70,000 thoughts per day. We're going to come back to this little part. And also, and all this and more goes on without any conscious action on, on our part. Is that not quite incredible. There is also this very deep wisdom, and I want you to all take a deep breath for now. In fact, I want you to take 10 breaths. There's been a morning of all kinds of things that have happened today, work, environment, etc. So I just want you to take 10 deep breaths in and out. And with every in-breath, just a gentle thank you to your body for all that it does. So just take a deep breath in, thank you, out. In, out. Thank you, out. In, thank you, out. In, out. Thank you, body, and breathe out again. Just gratitude to he or her, depending on which body you're in, and just out. In, out. Now, let's go back to the 70,000 thoughts. Incredible. 70,000 thoughts. So the question is, which are the thoughts that we hang on to, right? It's incredible. If you think about 70,000 thoughts going through your mind, and we can only hang on to so many thoughts in a day, how do we choose those thoughts, and what are they? So interestingly enough, the mind just chatters away. If you think about 70,000 thoughts, 70,000 thoughts and the ones that we, we, we hold on to, the mind is chattering away. I remember a Buddhist teacher saying, it's like the chattering of monkeys, the mind. And so it's called the monkey mind. So sometimes that chatter may be for a certain food. So here's a really good example. I was watching an old run, rerun of Seinfeld the other week. 
you know, I don't know if you remember this one, but this is the one where everyone's starting to eat a Snickers bar with a knife and fork. And here's what I noticed. Firstly, it was, ooh, when was the last time I had a Snickers? Wow, that would be nice. Yeah, that looks really delicious. Maybe I could have one tomorrow. And I watched my mind plan it all out. It was planning how I was going to get it, when I was going to go and get it, and all the reasons why I should have the Snickers bar. And it was truly amazing. It was amazing that I could actually sit back and watch this whole thing play out. And that's about that whole monkey mind, the chattering. So gently I said, no, I really don't need that. Next time, you, you know, maybe another time. But right now, that's not what I needed. And then the picture, the movie stopped abruptly. And that was the end of that. But it was interesting to see how the thought came up and how that process continued. And the problem is, is that if we get caught up in that, thought process, the movie, we reach out for the food that we probably shouldn't be having. That's not good for us. So next time you feel the need for something that doesn't agree with you, just hold it gently and ask yourself, why? And do I really need this? And just to understand that that was just energy that happened. It was that thought process. It was just an energy and that the thoughts come and go. They come and go. 70,000 thoughts, we don't know which ones we hang on to, but we clearly do. And it's really about just letting that thought go. So the next time it's for ice cream and it's, I need to have the ice cream. Well, actually, I don't really need it. And just, and just observation. Just observe where your mind is going with this. And this really is the path to intuitive eating. And believe me, it takes a lot of practice. Your body knows exactly what it needs to be healthy. But again, our monkey mind, it just gets in the way. The chattering gets in the way. So how do we access intuitive eating? Well, there are a couple of exercises, but it takes a lot of time and it takes some practice. And you keep having to go back and back and back and practice and practice and practice. But here's how you do it. So you can layer out a tablespoon of sugar, maybe a slice of bread, if you happen to have candy in the house, maybe some candy. Then you can layer out an apple, maybe some nuts. Maybe something else that's really healthy, maybe another fruit, maybe some berries. Just lay them out on the counter for a bit. And then you close your eyes. And again, you take 10 breaths in and out and in and out. And if you have an Apple Watch, you can use the little Breathe app and do the whole breath thing again. You know, the whole idea around this is to take a breath and center yourself. Find the center of who you are, your balance, the wisdom of who you are. And then you pick up the sugar and you ask your body if this is good for you. Don't overanalyze this, folks. And the answer will be instant. Of course, going ahead, you know that the sugar isn't good for you, but I want you to feel it in the body and just ask her or him, is this good for me? Put the sugar down. Next, pick up the apple and again ask her or him, ask your buddy, is this good for you? Is this good for me? And again, you'll get the answer. It's instant. It's immediate. And I want you to be able to to feel the difference between what's good and what isn't good for you. Do the same thing with the bread or the candy bar, then the nuts. And, and so you go through this whole process of doing this a few times. So you've got the feeling of what's good for you and what's not so good for you. It sounds so simple, and it really is so simple, but it's something that we have to ingrain in our body so that the next time you're in the store and you're picking up the bag of cookies and you just ask yourself, is this good for me? And you'll get that feeling. No, it's not. And it's fascinating because most of the time you can put those cookies back down again and go and pick up the apple or something else. 
it's really about training the mind. The body knows, she or he knows exactly what's good for you. I once had a patient say to me, I need chocolate. I said, well, there's a big difference between what your body needs and what your mind wants. The body doesn't need chocolate in any, in any form, but the mind does. And so there's that differentiation. You know, what does the mind want? What do we think we want? And what does the body need? Difference between needs and wants, right? I want a million dollars and I'd like to be sitting on the beach somewhere today. But that's probably not going to be happening. Anyway. So when you've got to that place of really recognizing what your body needs and what your mind wants, it's truly enlightening because it makes such a difference. So remember, folks, your body is truly amazing. And you may find fault with the size of your body or your weight or your height or my ears may be incorrect, or my nose, and we do. You know, we are in a culture where we find lots of things about our bodies that we're not happy with, but this is the only body we're going to be in. And so gratification, gratitude, and thank you is really important, and how we live in these bodies are important, and how we feed them is important. So if we can learn and to practice intuitive eating. It sounds so simple, but it's really hard when the mind is chattering away, right? The whole thing with the Snickers bar. I mean, it was just incredible. So it's about being able to discern, well, what does the body need? And what will the results be of this? Well, here's what they will be. There will be no need for dieting, so you wouldn't have to be on the diet, on and off the diet, and which diet should I be? You wouldn't need to follow the latest in nutritional research or news because you'd be eating for you. You'd be eating for your genes. You'd be eating for your body. And the result of that would be more energy and more vitality. And believe me, we all are looking for that. So if we can learn intuitive eating, if we can practice intuitive eating, we're going to be so, there's going to be so much um, empowerment and really some freedom. Vitality is such an important factor of how we function. And believe me, if you can eat well for your body, and intuitive eating becomes a part of, yes, this isn't good for me, and let me pass it over, and understand that, it's freedom. So practice. It's as simple as that, and yet it's so hard. (laughs) 